this week we're going to talk about writing stuff. Uh, today we're going to talk about narratives. Have you heard of narratives before? Um, narrative. Okay. Kind of, probably. <laughs> narrative writing. Okay, well, I wrote down narrative paragraph because that's what I want you to write this week. Is a personal experience, okay? It uses I because it's personal, okay? I went to the park. I went to go shopping. I went, I did my homework, something, I don't know. You use I, the first pronoun. And it always answers the five questions. Who, what, where, why, who, when, how, blah, 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 anyway. <laughs> I have to write them down or else I tend to forget, that's why. Okay, so it answers these questions. And it's basically a story, okay? It's a story about a person, usually your own life. And there's usually two kinds of narrative writing that we usually see. <laughs> anyway, so it basically allows them to replay a story or like learn more about what they want to describe, okay? That's why I got you to do descriptive writing first because descriptive writing is basically the basis of almost all writing. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we'll skip that one. So the first one we're going to talk about is personal narrative. This is a personal story, true story. There are facts. If it's a biography, it's written by somebody else. So these ones tend, like if you're interviewing the actual person, for example, if you're interviewing and writing about Bill Gates, you would write, you as a, the writer would be like, he did, he did. Um, his wife did blah 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 so it's like third person that's a biography but if it was actually Bill Gates himself writing it and he wrote when I made Microsoft blah 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 we call that an autobiography yeah we learn a lot of like success stories a lot like for example what's his name that Steve Jobs I think did he write his own biography I don't remember he was really famous for it. And then also there was another one, like the more famous and successful people tend to all have like some book written about them. Because they just wanna leave a story behind, right? And it makes it feel like the reader is a main character, like living their life basically. Or if you're writing a biography, usually you're watching their life, but if you're, in autobiography you're actually the main character I, like that's what they that's why they use i okay anyway so pre-writing what is pre-writing do you still remember pre-writing mm. is is pre-writing yeah <laughs> pre-writing is pre-writing great answer <laughs> Okay, um, it's basically before you write anything, this is when you gather your ideas and where you organize this so that it's not, you're not so lost when you're writing and the reader is also not lost when you're like reading your thing. Basically. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is why pre, pre means before writing. Okay, so. Okay. And when you're writing a narrative, we all, we tend to the most popular organization method we use is timelines. So like this, this is the life of Benjamin Franklin. For example, you always, for, so if you look at the numbers, this is a timeline. So it's a line with like dates on it. So for example, Benjamin Franklin was born in 1706. So as you can tell, you always start where he was born in because that's the beginning of somebody's life. You Thanks. usually don't like start in the middle, then move, oh, like he created this and this, and then he died in blah, blah, blah. Oh, then he was born in 17, blah, blah, blah. Do you do that? So this is the first draft, okay? After pre-writing, it's time to put our pencil to paper or keyboard if you're typing. For basic, basic format, we always start with the beginning, obviously. You can, there's different ways to make a good beginning. You can start with some surprise statement to like, you need something to catch the reader. Obviously, I don't want to cat with, I don't want to start with, it's a cat. 
It's brown. It likes to sleep. That's not interesting. Nobody wants to read that. Okay? Unless you're maybe like five. Or no, not even five. Like three. Maybe you'd be more interested in. Okay? So some, there's different ways. For example, you can put yourself in a situation, make a surprise statement, and even sometimes even start with a dialogue. You know? If you want to see what's happening, make it climactic and interesting. And then obviously in the middle, you have to use your descriptive details, like your descriptive writing in order, in order, which is what the timeline is for. Make sure it's in order. You do, you do not die first before you, you are born. And then all, you can use dialogue and even share feeling. If it's a personal, you, we wanna know what you're feeling, right? I'm not Alex, I, I, I don't live your life. I need to know what you're feeling. It's a way to share. And obviously at the end, like if the event, if you're writing about an event was significant to you, if it was important, like tell me why you wrote this, why this is, why you want me to read this basically. So always beginning, middle, end. Um, some people, like it sounds very simple, but a lot of people, you'd be surprised. They don't do it in this way. They don't do it logically from beginning, middle, and end. They usually like mix it around or it's not clear. And it just gets really messy, okay? So that's why I, I, I stress quite a bit, a little on formatting. Makes it a lot clearer, because if I don't understand it, how are you gonna understand it, right? And obviously, once you're done your first draft, we move on to editing. This is, this is more for to make sure that uh, you have all your periods, you have all your capitals, you have all the proper punctuation, you are like, beginning, middle, end, if your ideas are clear. I have like, I took this like checklist off like the book and see like this could be more interesting. So obviously your ideas, if there's enough detail to make this picture for me clear, if you're using it in chronological order, which means like time order, using your timeline properly, are you using interesting words? As I said, I don't want to read. It's a cat, it's brown, it likes to sleep. I don't like those. Those are very boring. Use stronger words. Like. And is it easy to read? So this one, you have, like I suggest you read it out loud, even though it sounds sort of embarrassing and like uncool and nerdy. I don't know all, all those other words, but like reading it out loud allows you to double check what is like, if it's, good okay if if it, you read it somebody listens to it or you listen to it and it's fine then it's most likely fine okay so i suggest really read it out loud even when i'm doing exams exams or testing like i always still read my own writing and obviously grammar and punctuation as i said we did go through all that whole half hour of punctuation you should might as well use it right okay so any questions 